What's up everybody? I'm back with another video game review. Came to my mind a little while ago that I have some games that I played and enjoyed and loved that I didn't play on the channel and that I do want to do reviews of. So, uh, basically, this first one is a uh, childhood favorite of mine. It's very much an inspirational game. It kind of shaped... In a way, I think it kind of really played into... I think it has... As I adjust my camera here, for some reason it's a little off. I think it has a pretty good correlation to why I got into Amiibos in the first place and why my one of my most popular things I do, Amiibo tournaments, isn't even a thing. That is Skylanders Giants, ladies and gentlemen. That video game. Uh, it's one that was part of the Toys to Life. Skylanders was part of this, like, Toys to Life craze sort of thing that went back in the 2010s, you know. You had Skylanders, you had Amiibo, you had Disney Infinity, which I could go on a whole freaking rant about, uh, which I might actually do. And then uh, LEGO Dimensions. Um, yeah, I tried all four of them. Couldn't really get into LEGO Dimensions. Uh... Uh, Disney Infinity, I could go on a whole rant about why I don't like it. Uh, Amiibos, of course, I loved, and then there's Skylanders. Now, I did not play the first Skylanders, which is Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Uh, I really wasn't into the game at that time. However, uh, apparently it was like a collab for like Spyro Adventures and stuff like that. I have some Skylanders from it, uh, as you can see from my Skylanders collection video. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty well into Skylanders. I think that's pretty well defined in me at this point. Um... But I did play Giants, and that's the game I first fell into. I got it for my birthday, actually. I got that starter pack. They had the big starter pack. That came with the portal. Came with two Skylanders. I think three Skylanders, actually, including one Giant and the game um, that you could play and stuff like that. And uh, You guys don't know the premise of this game. It's basically kind of like Amiibo. You scan figures into the game, but instead of the like them giving you like bonuses in the game or... Uh, do costumes or they play like by themselves in a game or you play with them you play as the skylander um and you go it's like kind of like you go through levels you go through a story progression and you fight in the game and stuff like that uh it's it's pretty fun uh sort of thing to do um that's that's, that's actually kind of one of my complaints though is like it's really cool to switch between the different characters. Uh, to switch between characters. They have cool little loading screens. They're loading them in. They all they got the really cool intros to each of the characters and stuff like that. And you incorporate them to the cutscenes a little bit and stuff like that. The levels are pretty generic. I mean, the levels are nothing too spectacular. Uh, they were just kind of thrown in, you know, to fill in the game and, and do stuff like that. And that's okay. I mean, that's not the whole premise of the game. It does make it a little hard to play through it a second time, though. But little... What was this? Not, this was 10 years ago I started playing that game. Oh, my God. I'm old. Um, so, because little 8-year-old me, uh, you know, didn't really care at the time. They just He just wanted to play the game. Um, but the fascination about this game was not necessarily the game, but the characters. I loved collecting all the figures. Um, the game had uh, elements, like Skylanders came from different elements. There was a life element, earth element, uh, there was fire, there was water, there was technical, and wind, and water. I already said water. Because I know there was, and they all, what they did is they all had a, oh, there was the undead and the magical. Um, and they all had their corresponding giant, Sky, first Skylanders giants at least, they had their corresponding giant skylander that was kind of like the main uh figure of the element and the elements they had uh, their own things you know, elements of the element and you got to uh go into different maps and different places exclusive to that element uh certain skylanders couldn't go in there some could um and it really gave some little uniquity a little bit of a incentive to collect the figures and stuff like that most of which i got at our now defunct toys r us store so it's a little bit of a throwback right there. But um, I wanted to collect all the giant characters. There was a life one. You get the, in the starter pack, you get the life one. It's just Tree Rex. Um, that's the Skylander I leveled up the most. That's when I played it as the most because it was one of the first ones that I got. Um, the water one, which was very hard to find. His name was Thwumpback. Uh, 
the technical one was pretty easy to find, though that was the only, like, tech one that I could find. <laughs> that was, like, the only tech uh, Skylander I've got. His name's, I don't even remember what his name's called. There's a witch, kind of like a magical one. There's the undead one, which was Eye Brawler, that he was pretty cool. Um, they had a... I don't even remember what the guy... The guy, the Earth guy's got a big hammer. Uh, and then... Uh, there was a fire one. Fire guy was pretty cool. And... I think that was it. Oh, and the air, the air one was the last one I got because it was so hard to find. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it any stores at all. It was insane. Um, so finally got that one, though. And they had their cool things where if you put them on the portal, they would, like, light up when they're on there. Like, the figure itself would light up when it was put on the portal. I thought that was a really nice touch. It provided a little bit more of an effect for it, and it, it worked good. Um... But of course, you had tons of other characters. They also did backwards compatibility. You could play with the characters from the first game into the next one uh, and get new ones that came. And I think they had a few new ones. And they also they changed their base color. Like the uh, Spires Adventure had the green ones, but the Giants had the orange ones. But you could put them in the same game. But you could get Skylanders the same the same Skylander, but with the orange base for Giants, you know, sort of thing. So they had that, and they also. Uh, and so there was just so much different custom. You could customize the characters in the game. You could change their colors, I believe. You could at least add like costume pieces onto them. I thought that was a really nice touch. I personally didn't really like it, but I thought I think it's a pretty nice touch uh, to put in the game, um, and then incorporating the characters and stuff like that. And you they they fight different boss levels and enemies and stuff like that. Um, but going back to the game itself, uh, you know, the levels weren't that interesting, but the character dynamics were pretty fun. I think Chaos himself, I mean, you think he's in every single Skylanders game that's been out. Um, and, you know, he's he's just generic, like, stupid, crazy villain. He's got, like, a, a smart sidekick sort of thing, and, and so that, that guy is there. And my favorite character, though, from that game, and he did not... I don't believe he came back for any other games. I don't remember. But his name was Flynn. Flynn was my f the funniest character in the entire game. He was the guy. So the so your main hub of operations, by the way, is this like big floating ship. Like pirate ship, but it's floating in the air. And the ship is like where all the stuff you can you can build like power-ups and you can get all this sort of stuff and it's like your main hub of transportation to go from level to level. And they have like an incentive. It's a, it's a dad and his daughter um, who are, are the main captain of this boat. And sort of, you know, they are the captain of this boat. Um, but I mean, it, I mean it, they, they have an incentive to be there as well. They're kind of like traveling and they decide to help you out. And uh, I guess the characters introduced and sort of thing. I don't know why my fucking camera's going AWOL on, on me. I don't know. Uh, sorry about the quality difference uh, from this f fucking camera. It's still not working, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Flynn was my favorite character because he always had the best one-liners, always had the best just out-in-the-blue jokes, and he was voiced by the, by Joe Swanson, Patrick Warburton, um, who, who plays Joe Swanson. This is the first time I ever heard of him. And he played that guy so well, and it fits so well into the game. Uh, it creates it's a pretty generic character character dynamic, I think so. But what are you gonna do? I mean, it's not the worst character dynamic. It's not, it's not horrible. It's just the overused, um, and it, it played really well. And then they didn't really have any other side villains. No, really, any side villains except for chaos. I mean, there's just little enemies going throughout the game, and you know there was. Overall, though, I thought it was a very fun game. It's a fun game to play, and I don't think it would be nearly as fun if there wasn't the incentive to collect the characters. And I know Skylanders kind of flopped because they uh, really didn't change their model a whole lot uh, going forward in the game, which kind of sucked. I mean, they, they struck gold with Giants. A lot of people, I think, would say Giants is the best Skylanders game. I would, I, I'd say so. I, I'd say so. It's 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 a very influential game for me, and maybe that's why I have a little bit of bias towards it. Uh, but who knows? Uh, I I always think it's a very influ. I I mean, I would have never probably gotten into an amiibo collecting, and therefore amiibo tournaments would have never been a thing if it wasn't for this game. I definitely would have done a playthrough with it, probably with like face cams or something, if I was doing the channel back then. But I wasn't. 
Um, that, again, that would be pretty hard for me to set up, personally. I don't play anymore. It's not that interesting to me. I still like the characters. I still like to collect them, um, even though they are getting kind of rare. I've got a huge collection of them uh, from this game and another game. Hint, hint. Um, but that's my review. Uh, for final score, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, the only lackluster part, again, is the the effort they put into the levels. They wasn't but unbearable. It wasn't horrible. Just a little bit more effort could have really sold this game uh, and put it even farther up on the list. And, you know, it's 10 years old now. What are you going to do? Uh, so, uh, that is my review. What do you, If you guys ever played this game, or Skylander Spyro's Adventures, or any of the other Skylanders games, what did you think of them? Comment down below. I'm going to get my camera fixed for the next video. Uh, but have us all have a discussion until then. So until the next time, everybody, stay tuned for much more amazing content as I try and try and get videos out. I'm so close to the end of the school year, guys. Less than a month now. And there'll be content galore. I've got a lot of great ideas. Uh, a lot of great stuff is coming. No more of this generic game reviews or predictions or stuff like that. we got big stuff coming. Just going to be patient with me. i got this stuff to tide you over. So stay tuned. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Okay,